I quit my six-figure tech job in Austin, Texas to ride a horse across the country. Cyril Bertho quickly became the internet's most hated horseback rider in just the span of a few months. Cyril Bertho is a 24-year-old failed tech employee turned failed long-distance horseback rider whose delusional optimism almost got him thrown in jail for animal cruelty and has him permanently tainted in the eyes of the general public. I quit my six-figure tech job in Austin, Texas to ride a horse across the country. I'm going to go from Austin all the way to Seattle, Washington. I'm going to go through Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Washington State. Make sure to follow my journey on TikTok and Instagram. It's always Austin. Every time you see people with delusional optimism, they almost always live in Austin, Texas. I'm telling you... I don't know what's in the water there, but it's got to be something. Back in March of 2023, Cyril decided he was going to quit, I use that word lightly, his job in the tech industry working for Airfleet as an operations manager to go on a grand adventure, a beautiful adventure of him bonding with an animal and riding it all the way across the country. No, I'm just kidding. He really just wanted to do something big to get a Netflix deal because he's greedy and he's attention seeking and borderline childish. Little Tennessee boys, 13 year olds, scurry to me like rats. So this whole plan of him riding a horse across the country stemmed from him wanting a large sum of money and wanting fame and notoriety. Moreover, I did fact check this and I looked up his job working at Airfleet as an operations manager, which the suspected salary in Austin is between 62 and 90K a year, which definitely falls short of that six figures, but I digress. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because right from the start, we really get to see his lack of credibility and honesty. Were you honestly thinking that people would think that it was cool for you to quit a six-figure job to go ride a horse across the country? But Cyril, no, 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 nobody could change his mind, even though he failed to do the littlest bit of research possible and realized that there are long distance riders that ride horses every day across the country and do it responsibly. He thought that he was the only one that was going to do this and take on this endeavor. So what did he do? He started shopping for horses in the most reliable place possible, Craigslist. <laughs> it's always Craigslist. <laughs> I am dead inside. And he stumbled upon Falcon. So I found this guy on Craigslist. Uh, owner wanted about four grand for it. And uh, he was looking at Bass Drop, Texas, about 40 miles away from Austin. So I decided to go check it out. So here it is. It's a painted Tennessee Walker. As you can see, black and white. Beautiful horse. I'd heard about these guys before, but never ridden one. So here I am riding this guy. And I gotta say, these are super comfortable horses. You know, one of my criteria is for a horse that can carry me 100 miles is he's got to be comfortable. I'm going to have my ass on the saddle about 10 hours a day. I want to be in comfort. And uh, second thing, he's got to be enduring. I rode this guy pretty well, and uh, he seemed to be fine. And the last thing is he's got to be brave. He's got to be courageous, not spooked by anything. He seemed fine. I wanted three grand, so let's see what he only wants to do which he scammed from the owner by telling them that he was going to be riding this horse across the country, but he was going to be responsibly training the horse for a period of a year before doing so, even though it ended up only being a period of 30 days. Why? Because Cyril did not want to provide food or housing for this horse. He only wanted the horse during the time where the horse was going to make him money or provide him fame throughout his journey. So of course, 
horse. He was going to be starting his journey very quickly after purchasing the horse without putting in any of the preparation or training to get this horse ready or even himself ready for this endeavor. As a quick side note, I think it's important that we discuss these owners really quickly. Yes, they are at fault here. This entire journey would not have happened had they been responsible sellers and owners. They clearly didn't want Falcon because they listed him at 4000 and sold him for three, which is a 25% price reduction. Just a little PSA, if somebody comes up to you and says that they're going to ride your horse across the country, maybe don't sell them the horse. But nevertheless, Cyril bought Falcon from these irresponsible owners on Craigslist and decided to buy the cheapest tack possible that was ill-fitted and start promoting his journey on the internet. This is possibly my favorite ad that he posted, mostly because you really see the amount of effort that he put into promoting this. Look at it, you guys. He didn't even Photoshop it correctly. You could literally download a free Photoshop app that would get a crisper cut and outline of himself and Falcon, but he just was putting the least amount of effort possible into promoting this. I just love how badly he wants to be a famous celebrity and just the fact that it backfired on him so beautifully. Cyril even managed to harass CBS Austin to give him an interview about his journey, to which they spent the entire time making fun of him. Osiro Bruteau is blazing his own trail starting this weekend. He quit his job in Austin, as he just said, and he's heading off on a solo self-supported trip to Seattle, all on horseback. He's got a goal of hitting his destination in 100 days. I see fear in that yeah. horse's eyes. He doesn't seem amused. He's like, really? I don't think Seriously? anyone asked him for consent. How are we getting back? Are they going to fly back or where? His mom. Airlift, just airlift the horse. He back did up. say that his mom is very worried. As yeah. The horse's know. mom or his mom? <laughs> Both, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll get to watch and see what happens. Exactly. Good luck. <laughs> you know it's bad when news stations make fun of you and these people don't know anything about horses at all. But nevertheless, to everyone's horror, he decided to take off on this journey. So this is it. After months of thinking about it and carefully training and preparing physically and mentally, I'm finally ready to head on this journey from Austin, Texas to Seattle, Washington by horse in less than 100 days. So you see me here loading up Shyok in the trailer and saying bye to my bumper. God damn, I'm going to miss that guy. But I just have to do it. So here you see me. I'm in Zilka Park in downtown Austin, Texas and putting on the saddle. I mean, this saddle must weigh at least 60 pounds with all the gear I've got on. And I've got a video coming too. Uh, explaining all the gear I've got on. Here I am. So long, cowboy. I'm my waist bag. I got a whistle, I got a light for the GoPro, chapsticks, a lighter, uh, earplugs, a uh, firefighter, headlamp, Garmin GPS map, some light blanket, wallet, and all my shit. I got broken sunglasses and DJI Pocket 2. I have this Brumby sound bag by Kim Scudder. I got a GoPro, 11 Hero Black. I have a Pole Zero battery pack, another battery pack on my phone, this GoPro mount that turns it up, some bear spray. I have a towel, this is my horse gear. So I got this collapsible bucket, a nitro gloves, I got this salt brick, you never know when you have to take off a shoe, so no one of those because I hope we can never do it. Uh, got some Benamine, some, uh, some other meteor sponsoring for if you get collar or anything like that. Uh, fly spray, thrush buster, some salt, just in case, air comb, horse brush, hoof kit, hoof pick, groomer. Some hobbles, haven't had to use them yet. I have some vet wrap, some, uh, some biofreeze, and then some other stuff for horses in here uh, and for me as well. We got some corn oil that adds to his food, a mosquito net, a halter, a lead rope, and a good boy. A Tucker Trooper saddle, uh, $200 for price, that's a great deal, $50 saddle. We got the Spartan, Rest Dollar, Alpaca, and Mohair mix, and I got the Tucker saddle bags, uh, Adventures Kids. Sparrow Alpaca mix with a cinch. Camp at night, I got this one person tent. Again, did you map it? Or did you know the terrain you were going to encounter? Did you know the wildlife you were going to encounter? Did you know the weather? Did you know the desert? What was your plan for food? food? What was your plan for help? What was your plan for vets? Like, what was your plan? What were you thinking? This lack of planning is astonishing. It really shows you how this guy's IQ is in the single digits. Imagine thinking that this little bit of substance is going to hold you over for the entire journey. <laughs> what do you think your horse is just going to be able to get enough calories by eating grass on the side of the road? 
Speaking of calories, we gotta say a massive thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Animal Nutrition Calculator. For those of you who know, or for maybe those who don't know, Animal Nutrition Calculator is the world's premier animal nutrition calculators. They are in no way associated with any specific food brands. They are just here to help you understand your animal's nutrition, regardless of what your animals eat. Animal Nutrition Calculator has a myriad of the best, most premium calculators available for horse. You can find nursing mare, lactating mare, forage calculators, cold weather calculators, senior growing horse weanling, even weight loss, which is what I've been using for my own personal horse, Braley, who's on a little bit of a weight loss journey at the moment. But Cyril could definitely use these. He could have used the forage. Perhaps he could have even used the free calculator because Animal Nutrition Calculator does have free base calculators available for horses, dogs, and cats. So you get a general idea of their base nutrient requirements. I'm telling you, someone should have told Cyril about this a few months back and maybe his horses wouldn't have nearly starved to death. These calculators are so incredibly useful, you guys. You can really take your animal's nutrition into your own hands. It's important that everybody understands what their animals need to eat and how much of it in order to live a happy and healthy life. It's way cheaper than going to a vet or reading hundreds of hours of veterinary textbooks. It simplifies your animal's nutrition in a matter of seconds for the low, low price of just $4.99. You really have nothing to lose and the value of these is just so incredible. Incredible. I use animal nutrition calculators for all of my animals. So thank you again to animal nutrition calculator You guys can click that link down below It's gonna be the very first one to check them out and shop that site. Uh, what was your name? Steve, Steve. Steve. Cyril. Cyril. Yeah Med Steve will run down the road. He was working on some cattle stuff and he offered some water for shy on All right, you're tossing about her jeans. Uh, my jeans were ripped up fuck and I was riding raw no pun intended and so Steve graciously offered to bring me to Walmart to get a Nice pair of Wranglers. So here we are in Walmart. Brand new pair of Wrangler jeans. That was supposed to be a water stop. I love how insufferable he is. I love how he just mooches off of other people that he meets on the road. But it was around this time where the public perception of him really started to shift because people started realizing that this guy did very little preparation for this journey and did not train his horse at all. How was he going to feed this horse? How was the horse gonna get enough water? These were all questions that people were asking themselves, which really started to create a community of anti Cyril Bertho or Too Raw to Ride fans. Hundreds, if not thousands of people started speaking out against this guy. Instead of taking everybody's advice, however, Cyril decided to shut down the haters and just keep on keeping on. This video is for all the bleeding hearts out there that are worried about my poor little horse. I mean, so, here with Animal Control in uh, the city, the great city of Post, Post, Texas. It got so bad that before he left Texas, Cyril's horses were looked over by multiple animal welfare organizations, as well as a veterinarian, to which there was a vet tech that filmed video of Falcon shortly into the journey, experiencing a myriad of bad health problems. Establishing a baseline for a lack of nutrition and nutrient intake, it became abundantly clear to everybody at this point Point that Cyril knew absolutely nothing about horses at all. He just probably thought that this horse was gonna survive off of grass on the side of the road.
Unfortunately for Pete, his previous owners must really have not liked him at all because Pete was lame and already skinny when he began his journey as the additional pack horse. But I just want to know who's the sorry sucker that this guy was able to convince to give him a free horse. But after this, we heard nothing but radio silence. And that is until Cyril popped up in Wyoming. Yeah, I know, totally skipped Colorado. How did he do this? Well, he trailered. And actually, he trailered pretty much the entire journey, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I guess we should all look at this from a positive though. He got so much hate and backlash that he decided it was a good idea for him to care about the animal's welfare for once and just trailer his horse until his horse got better. I'm just kidding. That's not what he did. He trailered his horse because he knew that he was getting ready to take on hundreds and hundreds of miles of desert terrain with no water and no food. He only trailered because he was concerned for himself and didn't want himself to perish in the desert, not because he cared about the well-being or welfare of his horse at all. I honestly just feel like the hubris of this guy is so insane because wouldn't you think that any normal person would hit a threshold where they would say, this really isn't worth it to me to continue. I don't want to go down in history as an animal abuser. It's better for me to just take my losses now, responsibly rehome this horse that I bought, accept that this was a stupid idea and just go back and beg and plead for my job back before my reputation is completely tarnished on the internet. No, this guy is so full of himself and so narcissistic. He just couldn't admit that he was wrong. The hubris. The hubris is unreal in this guy. Pete, you're gonna fuck this up. Pete, you're gonna fuck it up. The cringe. Oh, the cringe, it's unbelievable. Just imagine living in your own bubble your whole life to be this delusional. You know what I really love though? I love the people who tracked and stalked this guy essentially his entire journey. And I'm telling you now, had he not trailered 500 times on his journey, I really believe that both of the horses would have ended up dead. And that's potentially the only reason he did trailer, was not because he cared about the welfare of these horses, but because he didn't want to be thrown in jail for animal cruelty for killing them. Okay, buddy. He's not colicking. Not sweating. You're good, Pete. I'll be all right. I'm gonna take care of you. Um, He'll be all right. He's walking a fine line, you guys. Tennessee boys, 13 year olds, scurry to me like rats. I mean, look at this guy. Ew, why would you say that? That's disgusting. Beautiful pink coat, bay and white, with the absolutely pink stitched Tucker saddle bags and Tucker saddle, dot, 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 dot. four white socks, and uh, one blue eye, one brown eye. Rorschach mark on the front of the face. Dot, dot, kapow. And as we go in the back here, we got Mars and Venus, two absolute planets. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful horse. Now let us unwrap this little Tennessee boy and see what's underneath, under this beautiful and handsome body. Look at that. 
beautiful pink bay coloring. Dude, you've got a dry spot the size of Texas underneath that saddle pad, and you think that your tack fits? It was around this time, once he reached Montana, Idaho, where he decided that he was probably going to end his journey relatively quickly because he had law enforcement and animal welfare on his tail the whole step of the way. Not to mention that I can't imagine he got any good footage unless it was from the inside of a car. But he decided at this point that he was going to prey on all of the bleeding hearts out there that wanted to save his horses so badly from the destruction that he was putting them through by listing the horses in advance for sale. How much am I asking for my horses? Stick around and find out. If you've got deep pockets, one of the absolute best of the best, then these two horses are what you need. I'm asking for $60,000 for both these horses and they're worth every penny. What do you know? The price of these horses that were a total of $3,000, he was wanting to flip them for $60,000. I know. Again, going back to delusional optimism, this guy is the embodiment of that. Shortly after, Cyril was stopped in Idaho on his way to Seattle, and the animal welfare officers in Idaho actually cited him. I observed two horses tied up to the same tree, just beyond the campsite on the side of the road. One horse was a bay quarter horse named Pete, the other was a black and white paint Tennessee walking horse gelding named Falcon. Cyril had already provided digital copies of a valid negative equine infectious anema laboratory test or Coggins test, report for each horse, and certificates of veterinary inspection for each horse to ACO. However, both of these certificates were expired by over a month, and Cyril was not able to provide proof of ownership for either horse or a bill of sale for Pete. Cyril showed me his horses, which I took photographs of with my department-issued cellular telephone. I observed Falcon to have an estimated body condition score of three on a scale of one to nine, with scores of four to five being the average healthy range. Honestly, I'm trying to be very generous here, but if I was going to give this horse a body condition score, it would be a two. Cyril showed me the bags of high quality pelleted senior feed he was providing the horses in addition to grass grazing. Wow. Were you carrying around an entire 50 pound bag of grain or was it just little baggies? Were you just giving them handfuls? Oh, please, please. Can I just get a little handful of grain? I also observed Pete to have a large, open, oozing, swollen saddle sore, approximately four inches long on his right rib cage, and his left hind fetlock was significantly swollen. Essentially, they ended up citing him for not having the appropriate documentation for the horses, but this really shows you what poor of a condition these horses were in towards the very end of the journey. And keep in mind, you guys, it's not like these horses had actually traveled the full 2,000 plus miles mile distance. They had been trailered the majority of the way. I would honestly be shocked if these horses had even traveled on foot 500 miles. It's embarrassing that this guy was able to purchase animals. Embarrassing. This is why it's so important that when you sell your animals, you vet the people that you sell them to. Sell responsibly. So did he finish in Seattle? Of course not, because everything this guy says he falls short of. Cyril managed to crawl his way across the Idaho border to Spokane before trying to sell the horses for even more money on horse clicks, which keep in mind, these ads were taken down very shortly after he posted them, mostly because these horses just look like shit and anybody can see that these ads are a total scam. I mean, really, dude, you're trying to sell a pack horse that's lame with serious health issues that's a two on the body condition score for nearly $20,000. You got him for free. Shortly after his journey, I think Cyril very quickly realized that nobody was going to buy the horses for the amount of money that he was asking for because these horses are almost dead. Cyril has not been seen with or around his horses for several weeks now, which kind of just makes me think that he's back in Austin and he just left the horses, which is most likely what happened because all of his horse sale ads kept getting taken down. He was trying to sell the horses for way too much. Nobody was going to pay that. So all we can do at this point essentially is speculate on what happened to the two horses. I suspect 
fact that he probably just gave them away to somebody just because Cyril can't afford these horses. He has no money and horses are expensive. In my opinion, I think he just left them with someone, cut his losses, and is trying to pretend like the whole thing didn't happen. The reason I'm making this video now instead of waiting to see if anything further comes out of this is because I genuinely believe that this guy is going to delete all of the footage that he's posted on TikTok and Instagram. I think he's gonna hit a point where he looks back on how embarrassing this is for him and just removes it all from the internet because he got nothing out of it except for hate. The biggest positive to come out of Cyril's failed journey is how many people stuck together to try and help and save these horses. I love that we all came together over this one guy and it just makes me hopeful for the future. So that is the story of Cyril Bertho and his failed journey from Austin to Seattle, but turns out Spokane, but turns out he trailered most of the way, so who even really knows? A massive thank you again to Animal Nutrition Calculator for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out, you guys. It's gonna be the first link in the description down below, but I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.